Hey oh, it's Marco Catania representing Charles Sturt University. Uh, subject coordinator for ITI 597 and uh, a subject that covers service management. Hey, I would like to discuss a mythical and mystical topic known as the service design package, the SDP, the service design package. So, what is a service design package, uh, the SDP? Well, it says here a service design package. It's a document or a number of documents defining the service aspects and the service requirements through each stage of its life cycle, eh, the service life cycle. The SDP should be produced for each and every single new IT service. So new services, you will need an SDP. Also for major changes, you will have to create an SDP. And also for services that you're going to retire, so eh, as part of like IT service retirement. The SDP is really the blueprint. It's going to show you how the service is going to work and how it will be like implemented and especially also what the value will be to the business. Yeah, the service design package is an absolutely critical link uh, in idle space in IT service management space. If you consider for example the volume service design, it's basically all about planning. It's planning for your service level agreements, it's planning for your contracts, it's planning for your services catalog, it's planning for availability, capacity, and we want to make sure we can do the right things now and also in the future. So if they are basically all about planning, then who's actually implementing services? Well, the volume service transition actually covers like the implementation, and the whole building, the testing and deployment of a new or changed service. So basically, they're the doers. So how do these two worlds actually communicate? How does service transition know what to do? Well, that's where you find the SDP, because the SDP will outline in like a lot of detail what needs to be done. Okay? So if service transition, if they start to like build and test, and, and things don't pan out as like uh, predicted, then of course they can actually provide, or they should provide feedback to service design, because they may have to revise a number of like items in or as part of the service design package. Now the service design package has basically four key components. Yeah, we need to formalize the requirements, so we want to make sure we deliver the right stuff to the business. We need to like design the proper processes, the proper procedures, the proper agreements that support the new service. We want to make sure we perform an organizational readiness assessment. Yeah? Do we have the right people? Do we have the right skills? Do we have the right competencies to actually like deliver the service? And also, we need to think about the service lifecycle plan. Eh? How, do we, how do we pull the service uh, through its life cycle all the way from cradle all the way to grave? So, looking into a little bit more like detail at like the requirements uh, as part of the service design package, uh, you want to make sure you actually formalize the business requirements, uh, get it black and white. You want to make sure that you understand like how and where the service will be used. So, look at service applicability. And also formalize the various contacts, uh, the various stakeholders that you will need to communicate with. So, what about the service design component? Well, that one covers the service functional requirements. Uh, we need to formalize the changed functionality we are going to deliver to the customers and the business. We need to create like a detailed statement of requirements. Uh, we need to like detail exactly what type of like functionality we are going to provide to them, when and how, you name it. We also need to consider the service level requirements and the SLAs. And we want to make sure that the SLAs include proper service and quality targets. Because if you aim for nothing, well that's what you will get. Also, we need to cover the service and operational management requirements. Uh, once we've deployed a service, well, that's often when the story really starts. Now we need to support it and maintain it and, and make updates. All this stuff needs to be formalized. Also, what about like supporting processes like availability management, capacity management, security, contingency? What about the topology? We need to design like how all these hardware, software and network bits and pieces are going to fit together. So lots of work here as part of your service design component. So the third component is the organizational readiness assessment. It's really a report slash plan that will outline the business benefit. Eh? What's the value we're going to create, we're going to deliver to the customers and business. We need to do like a financial assessment. 
what's the cost of implementing and what's the cost of like maintaining and supporting the service. We need to do like a technical assessment. What's the impact on our IT infrastructure, on our hardware, on our software, on our interfaces? What about resources? Do we need more people, less people? What about our organization? Do we need to create like new functions to support the new service? So we really need to look at our skills and our competencies. Are we capable to deliver the service to the customers? So think about this one. Bob the Builder, can you fix it? Bob the Builder. Now you create your organizational readiness assessment and then you go, yes we can. The fourth and last component is the service lifecycle plan, which includes the service program. How do we get the service all the way from A to Z? How do we manage this thing through its life cycle? We also need to cover the service transition plan. How do we actually manage the transition of this specific service? Yeah, think of change management, think of release management, think of knowledge management. That needs to be covered. What about once it is in production, how do we actually maintain it? How do we support it? We need to like manage the whole operational environment. We need to plan for it. And also, we need to plan for acceptance criteria. In the end, we want to be able, we wa we want to, be able to measure whether or not we've actually done a proper job and whether or not we've delivered against requirements. Jew Muskie, practice what you preach. Of course, this is about the value of the service design package. Hey, Virgin Galactic has all intention to become a commercial space tourism operating business. Well, that's pretty cool in spaces like minus 270 degrees Celsius, okay? Hey, as part of their organizational readiness assessment, what type of skills, uh, competencies, and, and capabilities do you think are needed you know, to provide these extraterrestrial services? Simple question. Which one of the following statements is incorrect regarding the concept of the SDP? Answer A. The SDP is a major input to service design. Answer B. The SDP can be compared to a blueprint of the new or changed service. Answer C. An organizational readiness assessment is a key component of the SDP. And answer D. An SDP should be produced for each major change as well as for services that go into retirement. I'll give you a couple of seconds to think about the answer and then we'll move on. Okay, the answer of course is answer A. Uh, the SDP is not a major input to, the, to service design. No, the SDP is a major input to service transition, of course. Okay, the next topic, we're going to define and explain the concept of availability. Hey, until then, live long and prosper. Nanu, nanu, and I'll be back.